the most important city on earth. Troy, which also goes by the name of Ilios here or in the Iliad, Ilion, and that was the ancient Hittite name, the eastern name, Willusa. And as I said, um, it's quite a small site, but you've got to think of it as a, uh, a sandwich with obviously the earliest stuff going right back to 3600 BC, going all the way forward to the uh, Roman Period. It also, over the centuries and the millennia, expands. Um, you may think it's smaller, it is smaller than lots of classical Greek sites, but you've got to remember that most of this uh, dates from more than before a thousand years before the Parthenon. It's uh, largely a late Bronze Age site, so given that, it's on an enormous scale. So it's don't compare it to the Parthenon. Compare it to something like Stonehenge, no disrespect to our national monument, but it's rather more sophisticated than that. So throughout, you're going to be seeing Roman numerals denoting those different cities. There are at least nine, as I said. Uh, it's thought they found a tenth, the earliest one. The lower the number, the earlier it is. So Troy Zero is 3,600 BC. It's thought that the Trojan War happened in around 1180 BC, which is around about Troy VI or Troy VII. Uh, this is the foundation of a tower. And this, just to prove that it's true, you must go away believing that the Iliad is true, um, <laughs> was the northeast. The northwest, which we will also see, is that point where Athene came to the Greeks and said, if you want to attack, that's the weakest point. And hey, presto, still the weakest point of it. So it's true. Um, I didn't say one other piece of evidence. There's very little ancient writing, of course, but there is a sign of a peace treaty between the Hittites who lived here. This is the sort of interface between uh, eastern uh, part of um, uh, uh, sorry, Western Asia and, the, uh, and Western Europe, as it is today. We've come from Europe. To Asia. So this has been the interface between Greece and Persia, Greece and Turkey for 5,000 years. And there is one document that survived uh, from around 1200 uh, BC uh, from a Hittite king referring to a tribe which sounded a bit like the Achaeans, which is another word for the Greeks, referring to a peace treaty. So again, proving that it's true. So we'll go along a fantastic sloping towered walls of ancient Troy. Uh, more closer to the heart of Troy, and I hope you're getting a feel for the different sophistication of the earlier period. So this is Troy to 2500 rooms, and the bigger rooms, like this one, was a so-called uh, mega room, which is Greek for a hall. So these, uh, again, it's not as substantial as what you're seeing uh, later on in great places like the Parthenon, but it would have been extremely huge uh, for the time. Uh, and you're beginning to get a, a, a feel of this is where the... When Schliemann came here in 1870, it was covered with earth and grass, um, but it had been identified before as called the Mound of Hisselik, as possibly being the site of Troy, but it's completely covered with earth and grass. And when Byron came here uh, in around 1810, uh, he saw this mound, but there was no sign of any stone at all. So it was completely stripped off by Schliemann, and we'll see this mega trench that he cut through it. So it was one great grassy mound of which we're standing on the top here. Now, the most controversial part of Troy, which is the huge 50-foot trench that Schliemann dug when he came here in 1870, the big chunk here, and we'll go and look on the other side where you can see the names of the, the numbers of the different Troys. Uh, great sacrilege, and Kenan was saying they just took the spoil and threw it on the field. Uh, of Troy 2, 2500 BC, and there we found the ramp up which the Trojan horse didn't go. But, <laughs> but that's the, the magic of the idea of the Trojan horse, because the Skian gate is there, so the horse would have been left beyond there. But again, he went 
it's too early. And it's the same Kevin tells me with the treasure, that wonderful treasure that uh, you might have seen this in the museum, Priam's treasure, uh, discovered just where this fig tree is. And I think some workmen found it and they called him over, is that right? And he immediately saw a glinting gold. But as you can see today, a lot of the ruins survive. And it was deserted, Troy, for a long time, then was reoccupied. And from the 7th century BC, so not so long afterwards, people were treating this as the site of Troy. Thus, Alexander the Great coming in the 4th century BC, Julius Caesar in the 1st century BC, Augustus shortly afterwards. And this is also just here the site of the Skian Gate, which uh, crops up the whole time uh, in the Iliad as the main gate. There were two gates where they went in and out and where the Trojan horse was dragged in. And it's from here you have the uh, extremely sad scene where uh, Hector says uh, good goodbye to his wife and son, and the little baby son sees the uh, horsehair uh, top of his helmet nodding back and forward and starts laughing and um, uh, Andromache, uh, Sophie remind me of the quotes starts laughing through her tears which is yes. <laughs> so extremely sophisticated the idea that you would be crying at your husband going out to fight uh, Achilles where he's obviously eventually killed dragged three times around, but you're also laughing at this touching scene of his head going up and down with a little boy uh, scene. Before, this is uh, Troy 6, so uh, 1250, to that much earlier part of it with the earth bricks. And, uh, Kenneth was just telling me that behind you, uh, they're just excavating now the main road out of Troy where again you can see the sandwich of stones, the Roman stones on top, and Troy 6, around 1250, just below, and that would be the road out, the main road out to Troy through the south gate. Well, it's a tiny bit later, it's Troy 6 and Troy 7, which is getting very close, so that's 1250 BC to early 12th century BC, just when the war is happening.